but they heard there was corn down in Egypt. And they went down there to get some food, and when they went down, they come to find out Joseph is in control. They didn't know it was Joseph. Y'all know the story. And while they're down there, amen, they go back and they send some food. But finally, Jacob, Joseph tell them to look. He asked about the family, but he said, don't come back here without your younger brother. That's where we get to the story of chapter 43. Notice verse 37, it says, And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring not to thee, deliver him to my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief shall befall him by the way in which ye go, then shall ye bring down my great hands with sorrow to the grave. In other words, Jacob said, You're not taking Benjamin. Joseph is dead. I don't know what ever happened to him. As far as I know, he's dead. Now you're asking me to send Benjamin, my other son? Uh-uh, he's not going. But notice what Reuben said, let him go with me. And if something happened to him, to him then you can kill my two sons. And he told Reuben, he said, no, he ain't going with you. Notice here, Reuben, something about Reuben. Reuben was the firstborn. If anybody should have had clout with that, it should have been the firstborn. But Reuben, the Bible said, was unstable. Unstable like water. The father knew, I'm not putting nobody in control. <laughs> you wonder why sometimes you don't get promoted to another position in the ministry. Because you're unstable. When pastor look for you, he can't find you. Then soon something happens, you always cry. Y'all ain't going to say nothing up in here. Unstable folk, just like a yo-yo, up and down. One minute we on a map, the next minute we in the valley. One minute you all in my face, the next minute I can't find you. Go up in here. God is looking for some stable folk. You want God to bless you and you just be faithful. Tell somebody to be faithful. You ain't got the prompt. You don't have the politic. You don't have the amen kiss no butt. You don't have the amen brush no nose. Just be faithful. Faithfulness is a watchword. And I know as a pastor, when you can see some folk that are faithful, you don't mind giving them a charge to do something. Because you know it's going to get done. But Jacob saw when Reuben come hollering about letting go. He said, I know you ain't asking. Because I had a, a concubine and you snuck in the room with him. With the bed with him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My own concubine, when I'm out and in the field, wherever I'm at, you tilly winking in the tent with my concubine. There you go. Then you got the nerve to ask me to let Benjamin go with you? You better get out of my face. Come on, somebody. Unstable folk, God can't bless. He won't bless. Oh and when you read chapter 49, when he spoke the prophecy, the blessing, he said, Reuben, you unstable as water. Just like the tide is up, is down, up and down. You can't determine. You don't know what it's going to be. Some folk, you don't know what attitude they got. One minute they're praising God, next minute they're ready to cuss you out. One minute you can say, hey, how you doing? The next minute you better not say nothing. Unstable, and yet you want to get responsibility. You want God to Yahweh to give you something to move you up to bless you. Unstability hinders the anointing. Come on up. But I want you to notice here, 43 verse 3. Father point blank said no. Then notice here in verse 3 he said, And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest. He goes on. That we shall not see his face except our brother go with it. Verse 7. Then they said, The man asked us straight down state. But notice verse 8. And Judah said to Israel, In other words, he's saying to his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go that we may live and not die. Judah means praise. This is where we get the term praise from. Because when his mother gave birth to him, Leah, she was a man, the second wife, and she was trying to get the attention of her husband. She had two wives, Rachel and Leah. He really wanted Leah, Rachel, but the father gave him Leah. Y'all know the story. And in the midst of, Rachel couldn't get children. God closed her womb. But every time he went to bed with Leah, she was giving up. She was pregnant. Hey, and gave him sons too. And back in those days, they wanted sons to carry the name. Nothing wrong with thank God for the daughters, but they were carrying the name. Every time he went to bed, he just looked at Leah, she didn't pray. <laughs> Leah wanted the attention of her husband. And when you read the story, she always trying to do stuff to get 
his attention. In the first son, she tried to get with Reuben. He still, you know, he loved her, but he still wasn't treating her like he should. The second one, he, he tried to get attention. He, he, you know, he still was acting funny. The third one, Levi, he still, you know, he kissed her, but he still wasn't excited about it. But when she had that fourth one, that's how some of we're going to have to do, sisters. You're going to have to get your attention off that man. You have to get your attention off of other folks. She said, now will I praise the Lord. In other words, I didn't try to please this stubborn, rebellious, hard-headed daddy, and he's still looking at me crazy, but now I'm going to praise the Lord. Some of y'all are trying to get to please folk, do folk, and did, did flips and backstroke. Y'all, they say, hey, man, you done did all kind of stuff to please some folk, and they still tripping. But she got her attention on Yahweh, and when she had Judah, her fourth son, she said, now will I praise the Lord. In other words, I'm going to give Yahweh the glory now. I'm going to get my attention off of people. I'm going to get my attention off of folk. Men please and try to please folk. And they never satisfy. No matter what you do, they always got something else they want. So she named him Judah, which means praise. And so Judah came to mean praise. And it didn't mean that Judah did everything right because Judah messed up somewhere along the line. But the key thing about Judah, he got stuff straight, but he had praise in his loins. Praise was in his name. In other words, praise is what he did. If you gonna get victory in God, you're going to have to learn how to hold on to your praise. When I came here, I felt good because I felt the praises of the Lord going up. The one writer said, uh, 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 joy of the Lord is my strength. Hold on to your praise. Praise intercedes for me. When you are going through, continue get, continually give Yahweh praise. When you don't understand what's going on, keep on praising it. When you can't see your way, keep on praising it. Just know that you're in his hand, and if you're in his hands, he got it all under control. Praise will intercede for you. Judah went to the Father on behalf of the family. Lord have mercy. Can you see what your praise does? It goes up to the Father, and, and it intercedes on our behalf. Whatever we need when we're in famine, when we're in lack, when we don't have enough, when it looks like we're in a recession, a depression, money's funny, but if you keep on praising Him, He's going to supply the need. He's going to supply the need. He's going to supply the need. So praise and a siege for us. It goes to the Father. Number two, praise causes me to live and not die. Praise will see my need. Even when I'm at the point of death, praise caused Judah to go to Daddy and say, Dad, we got to go down here. The Father didn't want to send nobody, but praise caused him to let Benjamin go. Praise will cause some of your blessings to be let go of some of your stuff that's being held up. Praise will break loose in the spirit and bring whatever you are standing in need of. It is a weapon. After you done did all you can do, after you done gave God everything you could give, then when you don't know what else to do, keep on praising Him. Hallelujah. Praise is our weapon. Praise is my guarantee. Praise is my guarantee. Number three, praise caused me to live and not die. Number four, praise will fight for you. You know the story in 2 Chronicles.